So if you're presenting to students either in your classroom or online and you're not getting the involvement and the feedback that you're looking for, this tool is for you. So let's hop into the video. All right, guys, so the tool that I'm referencing is called Mentimeter. So I'm going to pop right in to the Mentimeter website in just a second. But here's the deal. Every one of us have this opportunity where we're engaging students, whether they're in our classroom or they're at home, and they're not really engaging, right? They just turn their brain off and they're just watching the content or they're getting lost. Well, this is a way to, one, hold them accountable to, to like being engaged. And number two, to actually have a give and take, right? So I'm going to show you how that works and why this is similar to Pear Deck, but in my opinion, it's simple and it's really, really awesome. Okay, so here's the Mentimeter website. Basically just says it makes remote work easy. You're gonna create an interactive presentation and meeting wherever you happen to be, right? So I'll just zip down through this. You can look at it on your own. But really, the preparation is pretty quick. Then you're going to engage a live presentation when you're ready and have students log in to a sister website called menti, M-E-N-T-I dot com with a code that brings them into the interactive parts of your presentation when you're ready for them. And then afterwards, you do get some data to follow up on with your students, create posters to analyze whatever it might be. Once you log in, what you're going to see is a list of presentations. Okay, so you can look at some inspiration. You can set up your branding and colors, whether or not you want to share those things out. Uh, when things were created, type search, all that good stuff. Now, I have created one Menti. I just found the, this website like a week ago. So I'm prepping for my first week of school and how I'm going to get kids engaged when they don't know me. They haven't seen anybody in the school or one another in quite a long time. So here's the deal. I almost always start off a week with one image that I think is really cool. So in this case, you can see the image here, right? Now I actually got this uh, background image from a theme, which I'll show you in a minute. And then as I go through this, I share with the kids a quote that I think is interesting. Uh, I'll put a link to that whole playlist right there. I do a Monday motivation. I share with them a quote. I talk about character development and all sorts of great things. You can see some examples there. But after I do that, then I do what everybody else does, right? I have like a bell ringer or we used to call them sponge activities. They soak up that, that time where students are coming in or leaving, getting themselves ready to go and it gets everybody ready to go, right? But where this is different is in order to build one of these, basically what I did is I added a slide, right? Now, when I add a slide over here on the right, it, there are different types of slides you can add and they, they fit into categories, which I'm going to show you a little bit later are pretty important. The first one down here are content slides. Now the way the free version goes, you can add as many of these as you want. So you can have a heading. Notice as I hover over them, it gives you a preview of what it would look like. You can put a paragraph of text in there, bullets, images, document, video, a big uh, idea, a quote or a number. So what I'm using here, it says big. And all I did was put week one. So I may have this flash up on the screen. I may just have it there for my purposes and just skip it with the presentation. But then I added another slide. And this particular slide, I chose the heading, believe it or not. Uh, and then I turned the background to fully visible instead of having a transparency to it so that the kids could see this image and we could just appreciate the natural world. Hey, I'm a science teacher, right? So... Then there's my quote, so I added another slide. I went to the quote section. You can see it highlighted right here. And there's something else on this screen that's really pretty cool. So the quote comes from Dr. Seuss. It says, if things start happening, don't worry, don't stew. Just go right along and you'll start happening too. I chose this quote for the first week of school because everything is different, right? Everything is happening and people might get all worked up over it. Don't worry about it. We're going to figure this out together. You're going to be okay. And that's what I'm going to encourage the students on for the first day of school and the first week. All right. So I chose that quote, put it up there. That's just what that's for, right? But down here in the lower right-hand corner is a little heart. So if kids love that, they can click on it. And I'll actually see those hearts appear on the screen live as I'm presenting. So if a kid says, hey, I don't like that, don't click at that, right? But if you like it, cool. It's just another way to get them engaged with a tactile kinesthetic response so that they don't just turn their brains off, all right? And these appear on a lot of slides. I'll show you where you can find them. If I go up to the top here and I click on content, they're right here. So Maybe if I'm presenting something and a, a quote that's really tough, 
to access. Maybe it's above their current reading level. And I'm doing that on purpose, maybe to challenge them. I could have a question mark appear down there instead of a heart. And now kids can, uh, or both, the kids can say, hey, I love it. Or uh, I'm not really sure I get what's going on. And then I can gauge the feel of the classroom just by that little guy on the bottom. Now, another thing that I'm planning on doing, I'm going to turn that off, is on this next one, I have... This is my first real question. So up to that point, all those fit into the free model. Once I get into the questions, I can only add two in the free way of doing things. So you can see the code at the top, many.com. There it is. You can turn that on and off as well under the customize function. So I can hide the instructions bar. So if you want to get to a certain point before you have the kids log in to be interactive, just turn that off on every slide until you get to the first one where you want them to do something. But in my case, I'm going to leave that on. And you can see the statements right here. We went remote on March 13th. I know because my desk calendar is still on my desk. For March 13th was a superintendent's day for us. And so students were out on the 12th. And then they had to engage. But it wasn't necessarily uh, high stakes in the spring. It's going to be now. And so what I might want to know is, how did you feel? Let's just be honest. This is anonymous. So rate each one of these statements. I was engaged with virtual learning during the closure last year. I liked virtual learning last fall or last year. I, I'm confident I'll do well virtual learning. I'm glad to be back in school this year. Now, since this is a rate example, whoops, not example. Since the type here is a rate these scales, what happens under the content tab is where I can change that. So I just, I left the instructions to be rate each of these. You can change that. Think about each one individually. Those are my instructions. And then down here are the statements. I can add more. I can take them away. I can reorder them. On the left here, you'll see this. Maybe I want uh, this one to be at the top. So I can just reorder them and it happens live. I could create a spider chart if I want or use sliders. Uh, so you can decide which one of those is best for you. I can say strongly disagree or maybe just set it as no way, man. You know, depending surf culture. Radical dude on the other end. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But anyway, uh, so I can let them skip or or not, right? So at, when the kids go through this, down at the bottom, I'm going to see how many students have done it. And if I have 10 students, half of my class, maybe it's 12, maybe it's all 25 sitting in front of me on that particular day, I know who how many have done it. Right. So great way for you if you have to take attendance virtually to figure out how many of those students are ready to go. OK, so that's one of the questions that I've employed under the free version so far. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is run an agenda. So the agenda, if I go back up here to the type, you can see it. It's just a bulleted list. I go to the content. I add it in. I can change um, the order of them as I want. I'm doing a demonstration on the first day of school. And so I can drag and drop different media in there if I want. I can show the bullets all at once. I want to do that because you'll notice I have a thumbs up at the bottom. I have kids copy the agenda as a way to organize their notes and use like a, um, a daily content. So they can go back and find what day we covered a specific topic by looking at it. You may not do that protocol in your classroom, but I do. So what I'm going to have them do is click the thumbs up when they're ready to go. If there are 10, 12, 15 students sitting in front of me, I can just look at that and know when they're ready to move on. Or when I can say, hey, by now you should have had enough time to get this going. If you're distracted, you need to get moving and just, you know, kind of have that conversation setting norms with my students. So the next thing is I have a green flag question. This is your bell ringer, your warm up, whatever you want to call it. So in this case, it says list three words that come to mind when you think of science or scientific thinking. I want to know where their head is at based on science in general. Now, this is actually my second of the free questions. This is a word cloud. As students type in three words, and you can see under my content here, it gives me three per person. There's a profanity filter, which is really pretty awesome. I have mine um, set to all like all languages even emojis kids are creative and then i can let them answer multiple multiple times if i want i don't in this particular case it'll generate a word cloud live and if you're not familiar with word clouds the more students type in the same word it gets bigger so it actually allows me to see what content i may not want to spend a lot of time teaching on right away live and anonymous from the students 
Now the customized side, this is where you're gonna decide when you wanna close voting. Maybe you don't want that up there, all that good stuff. So uh, let me go back to the type of question. You can see it's a word cloud. But I don't have to use, you've seen so far the scales in the word cloud. I may want an open-ended question and I want kids to just generate a response that will populate on my screen like little tiles. I could do a q and A. I I can have, maybe the kids had a reading assignment that they did and before I even start class, I just, I wanna have them say, hey, what questions do you have? From the reading, from the lab, from um, the video you watched, from your days of remote learning if you're hybrid like we are. What questions do you have? Let me see if I can answer those before we can just get started. Uh, you might have them rank certain things. So, hey, there were three vocab words in the reading that you had to go through. They are forces, motion, and vector. And maybe which one of these do you feel most confident to least confident? Rank those and then we can talk about it and move on. So multiple choice question, you might want to just ask them a simple knowledge based question. Or maybe you want to use this to humanize yourself a little bit. Hey, which one of these things is true about me? If you've done the Kitraduce Yourself or some type of About Me with Flipgrid or Gimkit, I've done videos on both of those. I'll put the playlist up there. Awesome, awesome tools. If you're not familiar with them, I'm guessing you probably are. And then you can see there are quiz competitions, which I'm going to do a whole separate video on. And then I just move on to the next content. So back to my agenda. Hey, the, one of the things we're going to do today is we're going to log in. So let's get Google Classroom, Flipgrid, Edpuzzle, all those things uh, set up, right? And I'm going to have them create different accounts. I'm still trying to decide what else I want to be able to cover on the first day. And then maybe I want to have them watch a video uh, that's instructions on how to do each one of those. So down here, I have my login set up. Well, let's add a slide. And from that slide, I'm going to choose a video slide. And then I'm going to go in. So, okay, this is Google Classroom. Oops. And so once I have my Google Classroom, if I have my video on YouTube, I can just go ahead and paste that in there, which walks them through that process. I can play it live and then have them go through, not the heart, but either a question or a thumbs up, or maybe I want to do thumbs up, thumbs down. Hey, I'm good to go. I'm not good to go. And um, so I like the question one a little bit better. I'm having trouble or I'm ready to go and that'll help me gauge it. So you can give them video instructions for them to follow on their own. They click on it when they're ready to go. They click the thumbs up, you watch your screen and then you carry on. So in my mind, Mentimeter is one of these things that could be just game changing for your ability to get with the kids that are sitting in front of you and the ones that are at home at the same time. Um, or just to get those kids that don't normally want to engage to engage in a way that allows you to at least have feedback um, from, a, from a distance, whether that's six feet or not in your particular case, um, and, then, and then know how to move on. So once you're all done and you've had your presentation gone, then you can look at information on the back end and decide what to do with it. So you could take that word cloud generation, post it right on the wall or bring it into a Google Slides presentation, and then use it to refer back to, hey, how are we feeling about these words? Which should some of them be more important? What's missing? And have those conversations based on what you've generated from the students. So it, it sort of could become that KWL experience just on steroids, right? So again, this is Mentimeter. This is an awesome remote learning tool. And here at Ball Guy Sci, my goal is to help students, parents, and teachers crush every class that they're part of. Hey, so this brings me to an announcement that's really pretty cool. Uh, I'm starting a blog with these videos and other tutorials, some freebies I'm going to be giving away. And that's going to be at kicksomeclass.com, where the goal here is to help students, parents, and teachers really crush every class experience that they're part of, whether they're in front of the desk, in front of the camera, or in front of a screen trying to follow along. So um, I really hope everything that I'm putting out there is helpful to you and to all those around you. Again, you can go to Bald Guy Saw on YouTube, check it out. Go to kicksomeclass.com when that's live. Check us out on Twitter, um, Instagram, Facebook. And I really hope this is helpful. I hope you have a great week. We'll catch you next time.